Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlickers, shills, desolators, peasants, vassals, minions, banker scum, yet again. Hello, welcome, I'm a useful idiot, and uh, today, go back to the USA to talk about banker scum. And in this case, it's a, an important story. The story actually came out uh, several months ago, but I, I always wanted to cover it, because it's a very important story, it answers a very important question. And the question um, that a lot of people have asked, including myself over the years, is uh, how is it that all these uh, extremely highly paid uh, corporate heads and bankers and hedge fund guys and these lawyers, why do they go into government service? They take a huge hit in their salary. Um, they make a mere pittance compared to what they make in their, in their regular vocations. And uh, certainly... I don't think anyone's naive enough to believe that they actually just want to do public service. So there's got to be more to it. And uh, the story that came out uh, answers a lot of these questions about uh, how there is a lot more to it. And uh, basically it boils down to the banks pay uh, their employees to go work for the government. And uh, so in other words, we have a bunch of paid spooks uh, full, uh, our government is full of paid spooks from the banks. So this goes a long way in explaining, uh, first of all, why these highly paid individuals leave these uh, high paying jobs to go into government service, but it also explains uh, how our government is captivated uh, by bankers, and by these corporate scum. And uh, certainly they are the candidates who have uh, the most experience, but the fact that they're on the payroll of the banks uh, going in there, whose interests do you think they're going to serve, particularly because a lot of times uh, these guys uh, leave government service and go right back to where they were before or a few notches above or for some other uh, uh, element of the competition. But uh, So it turns out that this, this practice has received attention recently because uh, Antonio Weiss, a former investment banker for Lazard, and of course we remember Lazard because that's the group that was uh, recently hired by both the Ukraine and Greece uh, to negotiate um, their bailouts uh, re, uh, reconfiguring. And uh, so anyway, now uh, this Antonio Weiss, uh, former investment banker from Lazard, is now a counselor to Jack Lew, um, our United States Treasury Secretary, U.S. Treasury Secretary. But when uh, Antonio Weiss left Lazard, he was paid $21 million to go into government work and, and paid in deferred compensation. And uh, so that brings up another interesting thing is that uh, a lot of these guys get deferred compensation. That way they can circumvent a lot of laws as, as far as conflicts of interest and, and, that, and the like. So they get deferred uh, packages and, and it varies. Sometimes it's stock options, sometimes it's a, a preferred stock, sometimes it's a, a bonus. Uh, apparently with Goldman Sachs, uh, there's a one huge uh, lump cash payment. And uh, so they, they, these uh, groups use various uh, methods. And, and part of the way they sweeten the pie is that if, you, if you, an officer leaves one of these banks uh, early, of course, a lot of his portfolio and his stock options and everything um, are tied to um, time. Uh, so they have to be timely. And uh, it, a lot of these restrictions for early collections on bonuses and stock shop option profits and restricted stock awards um, are waived when they get into government work. So that's another way um, they basically bribe uh, these workers uh, to go into government work and essentially work for the bank while they're in the government. We, we know that's what they're doing. A good example of just what I've just uh, brought up, for example, Antonio Wise is the uh, counselor to Jack Lew, our U.S. Treasury Secretary, and he's involved in this. And Jack Lew himself got a big financial reward uh, uh, from uh, Citigroup and also New York University to go into government work. And he, he's in tar charge of uh, the United States Treasury. And um, so, once again, uh, do you think there's going to be any, any conflicts of interest there? So, so normally a lot of these bonuses might uh, ordinarily be forfeited with leave, leaving the company. But, uh, like I say, this is all an exception um, uh, for government, for, for bankers going into government work. Morgan Stanley, for example, uh, they say, quote, in their, in their literature, that, quote, any government department or agency, regulatory agency, or other public service employment 
So these banks and corporations leave the spectrum wide open as to uh, who they'll pay to go into various sectors because they know that they can peddle that uh, influence and garner that influence, whether it's a, a government department or an agency or certainly a regulatory agency. So then, uh, that, once again, that also explains why we have these problems uh, with oversight and, and regulatory uh, agencies like the SEC. I mean, if they're all going to be loaded with uh, bankers who are uh, being paid bonuses and um, and uh, deferred uh, payments and the like, uh, essentially still being on the payroll for the banks they're supposed to be overseeing. And we've seen that uh, examples of that time and time again of that very thing, where the regulatory agencies are ineffective because they're all banker insiders. Uh, uh, the proverbial uh, wolf being hired to uh, watch the hen house, and um, the uh, Blackstone Group, a private equity firm, for example, has one too. And so, like I say, this is uh, ma uh, uh, huge banks as well as uh, hedge funds and corporations. And Blackstone has stipulated that executives quote will forfeit all unvested partnership units once they are no longer in our employment. However, an officer who leaves our firm to accept Specified types of government positions will continue to vest in units as if he had not left our firm during the period of government service, unquote. And I think that's a, a very, very telling uh, paragraph right there because it essentially spells out that essentially uh, these people are still on the payroll of these hedge funds and banks while they're in government service. Because at the beginning, at the end of that paragraph, he says that they will continue to vest in units as if he had never left our firm during the period of government service. So it kind of looks like tandem employment for me. Um, J.P. Morgan, much like uh, Morgan Stanley and uh, Goldman Sachs, they have the same thing, reward those who go into local, state, and federal. Um, and, and unlike some of the other uh, banks, actually J.P. Morgan will also uh, pay you if you want to uh, run for election, or uh, uh, either an elected or an appointed office, so if you want to even run for a position, uh, they will reward you for running for office. So that takes it to a, another whole level. And um, a lot of this uh, uh, systems that they uh, obviously are circumventing now are because uh, officers are often, like I mentioned earlier, officers are often restricted from early collections of bonuses and stock options and profits or restricted stock awards, um, all because of a 2004 tax law. And that tax law was a result of Enron paying $53 million in, in accelerated payments and bonuses um, when they knew that uh, things were going to flame. And, uh, and it also is a result of previous scandals uh, that are similar to that uh, for, with Boeing in the early 80s. But uh, this is a, a, an extremely nefarious practice, and uh, it makes a lot of things about how the bankers control our government clear. It makes a, a a lot of things about the disparity in pay and motivation, um, why these uh, big corporate banker guys can take these jobs that pay so much less to theoretically uh, serve the public uh, when actually they're using it to, to milk the public, their real masters, the banks. And, uh, and it explains a lot about the revolving door, explains a lot about uh, why these people are uh, coming in and out of the government all the time. And in spite of what... Uh, these leaders say the Obama administration is a great example. Um, of course, when he campaigned, Obama promised that uh, they wouldn't have all these uh, bankers or these conflicts of interest and, and people in the government. And, and then uh, uh, Barack Obama practically set an all-time record. And I'll attach a list below of all the Goldman Sachs people uh, serving in the Obama administration. Uh, interestingly enough, 90% um, of the time, I have this link to uh, Fire Lake, uh, Fire Dog Lake, it has this uh, list, and I was going to use some of the examples in the list, but 90% uh, of the time using Google uh, and that link, I can't bring it up. And uh, so Google seems to be restricting access to the list, this list, but I'll put the link below anyway. But it just, uh, once again, goes to show um, not only uh, do we have this heinous practice of bankers uh, sitting in corporate heads and hedge fund managers essentially being on their uh, previous employers' payroll while they're in the government, uh, serving their, their true masters. And um, so uh, there it is, banker scum. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.